Rose from Bike Exchange, he will be on more money than Merlier was. They've replaced him with Groves, who also has some results, but also hasn't won a tour stage, hasn't won a Giro stage, hasn't got the real huge results or won, you know, semi-Belgian classics. Like, Philipson's clearly still Tour de France, 100% Benji. So what, yeah. what's the role for Groves? Is it Giro? Is it just the quick step of old again? But this show, as always, is brought to you by Zwift, whether you're just starting out on your cycling journey or are looking for those final tune-ups ahead of a big event or race. Zwift is the online cycling platform that makes things fun, as well as being the name sponsor of the Tour de France firm, Avec Zwift, and this podcast. If you want to find out more about Zwift, the platform, the race, Go to Zwift.com, and if you want to try it out, you can get a free seven-day trial. I actually really like how this, how this comes into play, because if we analyze the way that Philipson has grown at Alpecin, we notice that he spent quite a few years first at UAE. He had his breakout win there at Santos and Under, ended up joining Alpecin, and he came there in the shadow of Merlier, basically. And they are very different sprinters. Merlier is the kind of sprinter that is better on the pure flat sprints, I'd argue, compared to the hilly terrain. And next to that, he also hasn't competed more than, I think, 10 stages in a Grand Tour. So there's not that finishing Grand Tour factor when it comes to Merlier. But when it comes to Philipson, there was the aspect that he can get over a hill or two. He has the versatility to get over hills, reduce sprints in that sense. And that showed in one of the Vuelta stages he won last year, for example. But when we look at Groves, we see that similarity. But Philipson has now broken properly out, in my opinion, in 2022. He properly broke out in the Tour de France. He got those victories he deserved after getting second places last year all the time. Caden Groves is not there yet. I think I see Caden Groves as Philipson... 1.5 1.5 to two years ago when it comes to the results he was getting and i think Caden groves has the potential of growing into the rider that philipson has now become and that is the aim that he should be going for he should be trying to aim for just that bike exchange i think he's going to the Vuelta this year Caden groves perhaps he can get a stage win there a Vuelta stage win something like that next year it's likely philipson tour de france still for me so perhaps a a Giro Vuelta, something like that, when it comes to Groves again, until he, unless he really proves something extra there. But I think that across the next year and a half to two years, what I'd like to see from Groves is him growing into the spot that Philipson has grown into now. And that's why I like the two-year contract, because then in 2025, if they become similar, they don't necessarily have to stay in the same team anymore and can go to a different team without a drama for the Tour de France, you know? And maybe Groves gets too expensive and if they're both equal in ability, you keep the Belgian rider on a Belgian team um, as well or you don't want to sign both top, yep. top sprinters. You see them presumably not matching quick steps offer to Tim Millier. Two results really stand out for me from Caden Groves this year and... As Benji said, like he's not he's not broken out. He won the Catalonia stage two. It's a world tour race, I grant you, but it's it was against Bauhaus, Hofstede, Vernon Milano. It, it yeah. wasn't it's not against Jakobsen, Groneveg and Phillips and you and guys. Although I think in Tour of Turkey he beat Phillips and uh yeah, Phillips and Bennett and Ewan. So they saw how fast he was there. But two results stand out. The first is Cambril Stage 6 at Catalonia. That's the 100k Carapaz Aguita raid stage. That was rainy, miserable, and Groves made it around that circuit in the peloton, in the UAE chasing group. And he won that reduced sprint. And if they'd caught those two, he would have won that stage. And he must have done reasonable numbers there. The second is Tour de Polonia Stage I think two or no three is the stage which he wasn't able to compete in at all, but there was a collection of three climbs and he did, I think around six watts per kilo higher for a couple of them below for the, uh, another couple around six watts per kilo for six minutes, three times uh, with a short rest in between. And that's really, really high level fitness 
for a sprinter. And it's, as Benji said, for Philipson. Like, think about the Tour de France this year, how few pure sprints there were. Yeah. If your sprinter cannot get around lumpy parkour, it drastically reduces the number of World Tour stages they can win each year. Parkour organizers are clearly seeing, we can't make this shit pancake flat. We we have to put a hill at ten k's. We have yeah. like Arctic race today. We have to put a collection of little hills at twenty k's to give something. You know, in Catalonia we always see it cut the Calaya first stage. And if you've got Jakobsen, well, just you got to you got to draw a line through half the sprints all year. And with Groves and Philipson, they know okay they're going to make it around. And okay, they might not win all of them. Philipson last year he didn't win a lot of them. But if you're in the picture. You got to be in it to win it, and so yeah, Groves. What do I expect from him next year? I don't know. Like, what lead out <laughs> will he get? Will his lead out be as good a, a bike as a bike exchange? He'll be the second wow. tier one. I don't know. They they delivered Maresco two stages where he could win this year, so I trust Alpecin to be able to get Groves though. victories. Groves as well. I rate no. Groves higher than Maresco. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you didn't last year. Uh, you, did, yeah, you never rate. Yeah, I, I you know who? Have, uh, yeah, Matt, I don't <laughs> want to talk about my glorified Connie Sprinter take anymore. <laughs> you know who also won some uh, Tour of Fuju sprints, Blake Quick. So you know how he's going to go on bike exchange. Aww. Yeah, <laughs> those <laughs> those Chinese sprints or Asian sprints. There, where the Australians uh, cut their teeth. Merlier's left. I kind of was surprised by that that they didn't want to re up him and that they went with like. Melia must have asked more than what Groves asked for because you'd think they'd keep the Belgian guy they brought um, brought through. Or Merlier wanted to leave because I did hear from like Ah, in the Belgian depths of the media, there were some rumors when it comes to not necessarily TDF alone, but also the cooperation between Merlier and Philipson was not great because I heard a story in the depths, the crevices of Belgium, that there was a race where one of them said that the other needed to be of the start list, otherwise they would not ride that day. And I'll be honest, I don't remember where I heard this story or what race it was about, but if that story is actually true, then there's clearly something, some hair in the butter is what we would say in Belgium, which is uh, not a tasty thing. Well, I mean, the one that didn't work this year, where because last year it looked all rosy. Merlier won stage, uh, the first sprint stage at CDF, and then he let out Philipson to come second and the others. Uh, Hent Vavelhem this year, Benji, remember they were in that group and Merlier came eight seconds behind yep. and Philipson was in that group. Now, I don't know if they pulled for each other, but yeah, no, they that they was didn't. where it kind of didn't work. And you're like, well, that doesn't make sense. Um, and so he's off, but I, I was kind of surprised by that. 